air. Uh, go ahead and finish up your point. Actually, I got another point while I was thinking, then I'll make it quick. Yeah, go ahead. While I was thinking, it, it's probably something that should be out there, but it was just a... <clears throat> I was reading about the beast before and the, the woman dressed in scarlet and purple. That rides the, uh, yeah, yeah, the whore that rides the beast. It, yeah, and it just came to me that her name is, you know, and this is what came to me. Her name is Gaia, and that makes so much sense. <laughs> Here I'm listening to you talking about the Pope riding in his Fiat, you know, and, and that just popped into my head. But, you know, with, they have the Fiat pop, and so now that big luxury edition you just saw that he was in, they're going to call that the Fiat Pope. Wow, that's... it's a serious rollout. Thank you, Dave. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Matt in D.C. Thanks for holding her on the air. Hey, I just wanted to uh, let you know, I went to the um, National Animal Rights Conference this year, and about a third or more of the people I talked to are big fans of the show, so just wanted to let you know that there is overlap in these two movements. Oh, this, I, I'm all for real animals, you know, not having animal cruelty, having them be treated properly. Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's the PETA people are the eugenics front group to control the animal rights movement. Well, yeah, and I wanted to have you uh, point out to people that if they're a real environmentalist and they're trying to cut carbon, if they're not vegan, then you shouldn't even be listening because the United Nations already said that animal agriculture is, contributes over 50% to the so-called greenhouse gas. Well, yeah, so, they say the flatulence yeah, of cows is going to kill us. Right. So if they're not if they're not eating, you know, putting their food where their mouth is, in a, in a way of speaking, then you shouldn't even be considering them environmentalists. So that's that's the first that's the that's the big point. And that um, I really think that it starts with animals, consuming animals, and like treating animals. People people treat other people like animals. You say it every day almost. And if we don't start treating animals better, it's just going to stay as bad for people. No, I agree. And if we don't treat people better, we're going to treat animals worse. We need to have empathy. We need to understand everything comes back on us. Great point. Did you have any comment about his lordship that arrived? Oh, yeah. Actually, you know, I'm in D.C. I scored a couple of tickets to uh, see him tomorrow morning at, outside the lawn. So I'm, I'm excited to uh, see what kind of, uh, what kind of propaganda he's going to be preaching. I tell you, I mean, he's a guy elected by a bunch of other cardinals, and people act like it's like meeting a god or something. But that's because folks haven't met celebrities. I've just been desensitized getting to meet a lot of celebrities and stuff. It's really quite boring. And uh, my heart rate wouldn't even go up talking to the pub other than just telling him, man, I tell you, you know, I, I, I think you're making this up. You got to know capitalism ends up helping people the most. How could you be a communist? How could you be a socialist? We're going to do some overdrive here for five minutes, and then we're going to continue the fourth hour with Leanne McAdoo and Maury. You don't want to miss it because she's got a lot of news coming up, a lot of key stuff. FBI merges criminal and civil fingerprints. The Pope, geoengineering, that's going to be important. Rob Dewar coming up at the fourth hour, jam-packed with news and information. Your calls and more. Right now we're going to your calls. Margaret in Oklahoma, what do you think of the Pope and Obama wonder twins uniting in the form of a giant carbon taxing eugenics monster? Uh, what do you make of this? I think it's awful. It, it's just uh, we just have to stand against it. That's what we have to do. Everybody has to stand against it. Um, what I wanted to say, I think, thank you for taking my call, even into overtime. What I wanted to say was about um, Francis Schaefer Cox, his first name is Francis, uh, who was thrown into prison, uh, just like Peter Schiff's father, for political reasons. And and uh, uh, this is this is how our Department of Justice has gone completely criminal, and they they can do anything they want and get away with it. Another thing I wanted to ask, say, this is really fast. I was about. Um, um, Mel Gibson's father, you know, he, he, he claimed years ago that the Pope was not legitimate. And this is not Mel Gibson, but his father. But he, um, he, he shifted to, he still wanted to be a Catholic, but he shifted to a religion that was called the Empty Seat Catholic. No, I understand. They still practice uh, the original Catholic, the older Catholic faith. Uh, actually, I know Hutton Gibson, um, know him quite well, know the family quite well. And uh, they have been, I think, set up and demonized in a lot of things um, for their stance against uh, the takeover of the Catholic Church. And regardless of what you think of Mel Gibson and some of the things he's done, uh, they're certainly right about what's happened to the Catholic Church. I appreciate your call. Denise in Minnesota, you're on the air. Welcome. Hello. Yes, go ahead. I just have two quick comments. One you need to write down to give to Peter Schiff. He needs to get a hold of Barry Shank. Okay. That guy 
has gotten more people that have been wrongfully imprisoned, and this is an obvious case of this man should not be still sitting in prison. The other comment I had was, I would not want to be in the Pope's shoes the day he meets the Lord. Yeah, I don't think this Pope even believes in God. You can just see he's, a little, he's just a little social engineer, communist, probably an atheist, probably, who knows? I mean, it's just, I don't want to judge him myself, but the fruits of this guy and the whole evil media behind him, I mean, what does that tell you when the media is behind him? They blackmailed the Catholic Church, whether it was good or bad. They blackmailed it, they took it over, and the question is, who controls Pope Francis? Wouldn't want to be in his shoes. I wouldn't either. God bless you, ma'am. But one other point. Go ahead. Oh, she's gone. Sorry. Jared in Kentucky, you're on the air. Hello. How you doing? Uh, how neat it is to talk to you, Alex. I, I started listening to you with my dad about 20-some years ago when I was in my early to mid-teens. So it's it's been, been neat to see you grow. Uh, uh, am I on? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, I just wanted to say that... Uh, you know, you said something that, that, you know, got me thinking. You talked about, you know, bullies, you know, and how bullies just, you know, with the uh, forced inoculations, now the pedophilia, letting migrants come in and walk all over our, our culture. You know, it's kind of they're seeing how far they can push it. Yes. And another thing that, that uh, bullies do is not only do they keep, keep trying to, you know, see how far they can push things, but they also like to uh, try to provoke, you know, the person they're targeting too. And I honestly believe that, you know, the elites and stuff, you know, I don't know that they believe in all this stuff as much as they know it really makes the people they oppose angry. And I think that they're just keeping on pushing and pushing and pushing, and they yes. aren't going to stop in, in, until they basically provoke an armed confrontation. I that's think that's it. what they want. That's it, because they know culturally we're voting with our dollars, culturally the Federal Reserve's being exposed, culturally the corrupt Vatican's falling apart. They know that, so they want to force a confrontation, a, a war. It's kind of like World War I. The British and others couldn't beat German ingenuity and science. They were taking over the world by economics, so they killed their crown prince. The Germans got mad, had a war. Then, they, then the British intelligence funded Hitler, put him in. He didn't work for him, but they wound him up. It's like ISIS. And they were able to defeat Germany. They did a great job. They got to kill 20 million Germans. So you're absolutely right. Great points, Jared. It is forced culture shock with the pedos, all of it. This is the takeover. This is it. All right. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. You're listening to the fourth hour overdrive. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and joining me is Rob Dew here for the first segment of overdrive. We're going to be taking some of your phone calls later on in the show. Uh, but first, we wanted to get into some of the things that are at the top of Drudge. Um, we are looking at, the, there's a story now where they're talking about a growing number of Belie conspiracy theorists believe that California's drought is actually being caused by the government. Now, of course, the way that this whole thing is being reported is super condescending. And, you know, Rob, do let's get into it. I I'm tired of this condescending thing of saying, how could that even exist? Well, let me just say this. Back in 2009, I made a road trip with uh, Jason Douglas and Jason Burmis. We went and toured California. Drove up to the Northern California, met Rosalind Peterson, um, and met her, the, the town she lived in, met her mayor, who also thought something was going on. So the, and Rosalind had worked for the Agricultural Board. She was uh, been in farming all her life. The farmers we went and talked to, Rosalind, there's something going on. They're spraying <laughs> something. The trees are dying. Right. The, the livestock is sick. There's something going on. We're not getting as much rain as we used to. There's high levels of heavy metals in the snowpack. These all aren't crazy people right. that are coming up with this. And and the, the guy they focus on there, Dane Wigington, we've had him on the show before. Uh, we're actually trying to get him on for tomorrow. Um, you know, these people aren't crazy people. Dane has worked in the solar industry for a while. And he's exactly. like noticing less solar activity hitting the earth. He's taken a lot of, uh, of, a lot of things fun. in to get lab tests done, a lot of samples there. We've spoken to so many people. And we're going to actually be airing some videos coming up in the next uh, segment where we're we have experts talking about how weather modification is being used, how it's been used as a weapon of warfare. Uh, so we're we're going to get more into that. Because we have an amazing documentary is, uh, from Ben Livingston, who is the father of weather weapons. This guy right. was 
uh, doing cloud seeding where he said they would take a small cloud, run a jet through it a few times, spraying in their aerosols, and they would turn it into a monsoon to flood areas out that they wanted flooded out. And they did this with precision back in the 60s. This was during the Vietnam War. Right. So you think they're not doing Allegedly. it Allegedly. And you think it's not more advanced now? Come on. <laughs> and, you know, I have, there's a couple articles in The Guardian. Uh, here's one from 2012. U.S. geoengineers to spray sun-reflecting chemicals from balloon. Okay, they're not doing it from balloons, I'll tell you that. But this is just, this is the cover story. Oh, we're doing it from balloons. And you go down to the third paragraph, David Keith, who's a, a big geoengineering proponent, he's been confronted many times by other uh, uh, geoengineering activists. One of the investigators has argued that solar geoengineering could be an inexpensive method to slow down global warming, but other scientists warn that it could have unpredictable, disastrous consequences for the Earth's weather system and food supplies. Environmental groups fear that the push to make geoengineering a plan B for climate change will undermine efforts to reduce carbon emissions. So they hide it on this carbon climate change BS. Right. But this, this right here, what Earth's weather systems and food supplies. We talked to Dr. Tim Ball. He was in Fall of the Republic. He, he was the guy who's been studying the climate his whole life. Right. And he says, look, the climate changes. It happens all the time. You can't stop climate change if you wanted to. But what we're doing is trying to play God in certain areas, in certain regions, and by spraying stuff in the air, we're basically destroying certain areas. We're changing right. their weather systems. And that's exactly the concern. We have the United Nations Environment Program where they're actually talking about geoengineering and how important it is uh, to combat global warming and climate change. But of course, they talk about the fact that you can't mess with one part of the environment without affecting many other parts of the environment. It's a weird version of the butterfly effect. If you mess with something here, it's going to change something downstream. Exactly. And, and you know, here it is right here. You have the uh, UN Environment Program. Big conspiracy theory doesn't exist. The reporter, you know, t says to Wigington, you know you sound crazy, right? Saying that the government can control the weather. Well, here it is right here from the UN. Or we have uh, geoengineering symposiums where they're talking about these things going on, uh, experiments in aerosol, solar aerosol spray. I totally forgot about this. We could actually, if the guys could look up geoengineering patents that are filed yeah. at the U.S. Patent Office. Right. There's a list of them. Right. It's not like one or two. There's a whole list of them. I mean, this, this is actively going on right now, and it's happening above you. It's happening everywhere. I mean, I've, I've shot plenty of chemtrails. I know what a chemtrail looks like from a contrail, and people say they don't like to use that word, but... I mean, I call it as I see it, and uh, I am not a big fan of what they're trying to do to us and then how it's being played off as you're crazy if you bring it up. Yeah. It's just regular airplane traffic. There's more airplane traffic. Well, and they say, well, why would they do that? Why would they do that to us when they're breathing the same air, the same sky? I mean, these are people that don't think ahead. They are spraying particles into the sky, heavy metals, aluminum, things like that, thinking that it's going to be blocking the sun. And... That There's is all kind of there. raining down on us. I mean, oh no, it's a conspiracy theory. I don't. Yeah, those no, are patents. Exist. Those are patents. Just look away. Nothing to see here. Now this is from the Guardian, uh, February 2015. Spy agencies fund climate research and hunt for weather weapon. And uh, this is, of course, you know, <laughs> I think they kind of this stuff comes out years later. They've already got this weapon. It already exists. I actually have a clip. Um, where Michio Kaku was on CBS this morning talking about the alleged use of CIA uh, weather weapons like you were talking about in Vietnam, Operation Popeye. Watch how the uh, news anchors react to him bringing this up. In part because, too, I remember reading the stories that China had used this during the Olympics, that the USSR had used this after Chernobyl to create rain clouds. I mean, w did those really work then? We have some of these capabilities now? Inconclusive. Even <laughs> in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War to wash out the Viet Cong. Governments have been playing with, with this to. thing. Alleged to. Alleged, alleged to, right. Yeah. Now, like, oh, yes, we yes. realize <laughs> that for decades now, these governments have been alleged <laughs> to have experimented with weather control, but nothing... The government's not going to sue you. Right. I mean, it's ridiculous. The and government's not going to sue him for saying that they did that. We have the guy who did it back in the Army and Air Force right. on the show. We interviewed him. It's called Project Popeye. <laughs> you know, and then he goes on to talk about how, but we're doing this in the lab. We're testing with these, shooting these laser weapons up and they're, you know, manipulating the ionosphere. When we, that has also been admitted uh, that that's exactly what was going on with the HARP program. Exactly. And those HARP devices are all over the world. They're not just yeah. up in Alaska. 
There's a map of them. They have some in South America, some in North America, and they heat the ionosphere. Yeah. And what is that going to do? Well, they used to launch nuclear. They were talking about 